Hello and welcome back to the Glenscope channel where today we're going to be looking at the fleeting truth behind anything that Bill Blair says, which is going to be a bit like hunting a mythical creature. I'm not even sure if it exists. Anyway, a little bit of backstory. May 1st, 2020. The Liberals did a Order and Council, or OIC, and they basically banned 1500 fires because they say so. They didn't have any debate, they didn't go through any committee, you know, committees or anything to see if it's like has any like weird stuff in it and there definitely was some weird stuff like they banned like missile launchers and mortars and stuff things that were already banned because of the not because of the firearms laws but because of the explosive laws in Canada so you couldn't get those things anyway uh, the whole reason they did that was because of the Nova Scotia shooting, which happened April 18th and 19th, just 10 days before. So this is about two weeks. Basically, the Liberals are trying to justify their ban, and this interview takes place on May 3rd, just two days after they announced their ban. And they've declared victory, basically. Everyone is now safer. Uh, these guns are now prohibited, uh, except for everyone still has them, and everyone will have them for two years and all that stuff. Anyway... Um, that's, I guess, besides the point. We'll save that one for later. A little bit of extra information over the last two months. RCMP is not really telling anyone about this. They're just sort of banning them. And at the moment, they've banned 9,500 additional firearms on top of the 1,500 firearms banned by name on May 1st. So that's just a little bit of side information. Okay, before we start, I have to bring this up. Bill Blair, why are you doing the grumpy cat face? The resemblance is striking. Like, honestly, you should enter a contest because you would win every time. Okay, with that, let's just get into it. Like we saw in Nova Scotia are horrific, tragic, and terrifying. But the fact is they account for less than 1% of the firearms deaths in Canada. And as far as we know, the guns used in the Nova Scotia mass murder were purchased in the U.S. and smuggled here. So to begin with, would this ban that you've introduced had any impact on that situation? And the answer to that is yes, Evan. Guys, they did it. They just needed to ban the legal guns, and then the illegal guns will no longer come into Canada. Wait, it doesn't work like that, does it? I'm being told by the voice in my head that that is, in fact, not how it works, and that is simply just wishful thinking. Okay. I might need some high-tech graphical technology to sort of explain what's going on here. Welcome to the high quality graphical interface. Only the top YouTubers understand how to use it. Nova Scotia is right here. This is where it all started. And because I'm a pro YouTuber, I can color within the lines. We have our land border between the USA and Canada. Up here is Alaska. Perfect. So Canada on May 1st went ahead and banned AR-15s and other semi-automatic weapons. No more AR-15s. The government is protecting you. Congratulations, everybody is saved. And Bill Blair, as we just heard, has said that this ban would have stopped the Nova Scotia shooter. Except for one problem. this guy. Now Star Wars is dead to me so this is okay. We have our smuggler friend and he says to any nefarious person, hey I can get you anything you need, no questions asked. And the Nova Scotia shooter says, yeah I would like four semi-automatic weapons. Maybe one of them was an AR-15, we don't know. So he is able to cross a border uh, on a couple of different ways because either through sea because as you can see Nova Scotia is basically an island so you can just drive a drive a boat over there or you can cross a border in the middle here it looks a lot like this it's just nothing it's just a you know there's nothing blocking you from actually crossing crossing the border it's the longest undefended border in the world so you can just walk across there's nothing stopping you which brings us back to our smuggler friend. Our smuggler friend says, okay, no problem. You got money, it's good. I got debts to pay. He crosses a border and then gives it to our nefarious person here. And he says, congratulations. You're now the proud owner of an illegal weapon. The government doesn't know about it. You don't need a background check. You don't even need a license, a gun license to own this. Because again, you're not going through the system. Now, 
that's that's very strange because then we have Bill Blair over here. Oh my God, I cannot copy select right now. Bill Blair is like, he doesn't want to look at this. He says, no, 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 no. This over here is the checkbox. Every, everything is now safe. Canada is secured. He doesn't even bother looking at the smuggling. He claims victory. Now that is a mark of a true champion. Claiming victory when, you know, all odds are against him. Okay, so we got way off on a tangent there, so let's just go back to Bill Blair's response, because we're only like half a sentence in right now. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, I'm not, not going to discuss, it's up to the Mounties to disclose the weapons uh, and, and their origins in, in the course of their investigation, but I think when that information is available, Canadians will understand its relevance to the, the steps we have taken today. And I want them also to remember its, its relevance to, to other tragic crimes in ca Canada. These are the type of weapons that were used at Ecole Polytechnique to, to murder. So Bill Blair is doing an appeal to emotion because he's not answering the question. The question was, would this law have stopped the Nova Scotia mass shooter? As we've seen from the previous example, it would not have. So he's just kind of rambling right now, just stating that guns are bad and we banned them, so you should feel safer. Why are you not feeling safe yet? Women that were used in, in Quebec when at, a, at a mosque to kill six worshippers. Um, the same type of weapons that were used to kill in, in Moncton the RCMP officers or Fredericton police officers in Fredericton or the RCMP in Meyerthorpe. You know, we have had far too many tragic incidents in this country where weapons that were not designed for the purposes for which weapons are allowed in this country, which is sporting and hunting activity. These weapons were designed for military use. They're designed for soldiers to kill soldiers. Henceforth, not a single more one of these weapons can ever be sold legally in Canada. And so as many as we have today, that's the max. And, and now we will begin the hard work in Parliament of bringing forward legislation because we want to be able to deal with the, those weapons that do exist in our society safely, responsibly, and effectively. And Parliament will decide how those weapons but will eventually be dis This is par for the course for the Liberal Safety, safety Minister. Whenever the word gun is, you know, challenged, challenged to him, he will just continue to rattle off, um, you know, the mass shootings, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, continuously to avoid actually answering the question. I mean, his initial response we saw that was, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. That, that was a lie. It would not have stopped the Nova Scotia mass shooting. So what he's doing now is just basically trying to qualifying, trying to, you know, please trust me. We're, you know, we have your best interests at heart. Everyone is now safer, you know, no more legal guns. But again, it's not gonna stop the illegal guns and it's not going to stop criminals. This is nothing nothing to do with criminals. It's just the people who would turn in, turn in these firearms are the people that would not be a threat in the first place. Minister, your government, the Prime Minister, you, you keep using this term military assault weapons designed to kill people. The point is that's not really a legal term, as you know. The actual term are semi-automatic weapons. We already have designations, restricted, non-restricted, and prohibited. We also already have limits on magazine capacity between five and ten rounds. So I'm just trying to figure out, you're using terms that I, I, I understand that you're, they sound terrible, but how are you actually defining what is banned? Is it, are you banning all semi-automatic weapons? No, we, we, you'll notice on the list the weapons that we are banning. First of all, all of them have in their, in their origins and in design military use. But they are all semi-automatic. They are all capable of rapid sustained fire, not automatic fire, but rapid sustained fire. They're all capable of taking large capacity magazines and they all use center fire ammunition, not 22 rim fire ammunition, but ammunition either 223 NATO rounds or higher uh, capacity of rounds. And, and, and so those are the weapons that have made this list. So what Bill Blair is doing is that he's mixing like legal terms and like illegal terms in the sense that like criminals use this and legal, you know, legal owners use that. And he's like intermixing them to try to confuse people and be like, are legal owners really using like illegal things? No, no, we're not. And I'll give you some, some examples. Let's say this rapid sustained fire. So all these guns are capable of rapid sustained fire. 
I mean, if you hear that and you have no idea what guns Canadians can and cannot cannot use and you have no understanding of the laws in Canada, you may not understand that automatic weapons entirely have been banned since 1977. So when you hear rapid sustained fire, that that doesn't mean anything. That just means like you click the trigger real fast and then in Canada, when your rifle's out after five rounds, like you have to reload and load some more. Which leads me to my next point. Magazine capacity. All these guns are capable of high capacity magazines. Well, yeah, I mean, if you used a high capacity magazine and it's an original state, then yes, you, that, you would be a criminal and you would be arrested. There's already laws for that. So I, I don't understand why that really matters because if you were to get an illegal gun, a high capacity magazine is the least of your concern. You don't care, right? You will use whatever magazines you have. And the other fact is that these are all center fire rifles. Well, that's again, kind of a lie because you, you named 65 rimfire guns in the OIC. So I have to ask you like, why are you deceiving Canadians about these sort of basic facts about your own law? Like, I thought the whole purpose of this was to make Canada safer. If Canada is safer because of this law, why would you need to lie about it? Of prohibited weapons. They, they are not designed and used for hunting, and they're not designed and used for sports shooting. They were designed and they have been used to kill people. But a lot and of so those, are, but, but you know, sports shooters country. will say a lot of these are used in sport shooting and we I, I'm just trying to figure out we already have limits on magazine capacity we already have limits on restricted non restricted and prohibited weapons I'm just how did you draw the distinction because I think definitions are really important to figure out what are going to be guns that you will see and what you won't see well some, some of the weapons have been have been prohibited by characteristic grenade launchers for example 50 caliber sniper rifles we a 50 cal sniper rifle, Bill Blair, costs between eight and like 15 grand. That doesn't even include optics. Optics is another two to six thousand dollars. So for the gun, like you're looking minimum 10 grand investment to 25 grand ish, and another five to 15 dollars per bullet. Like this is not criminal hardware right this is high-end expensive long-range precision shooting it's only used in competitions or just for fun that's the only thing it's good for it's just a high-end piece of tech so if you're seeing criminals use 50 cals then there's been no data released to statistics canada about it let's talk about grenade launchers okay grenade launchers in canada were legal like the ones that you can stick on stick on your gun or whatever but in Canada, you can't get the grenades. The grenades are regulated to the explosive laws. It has nothing to do with the firearms laws. The, the most that you could do with them is shoot a flare. And flares are, are, are legal. So it doesn't really matter if you can use a flare launcher or a grenade launcher. It's the same thing. It just shoots flares. So do you feel Canada is safer because you banned a piece of tech which has never, never been used in a crime? And... A tube that you could basically replace with anything at home hardware? We are prohibiting those weapons because quite frankly they have no recreational value in this country but we also know that the other weapons are designed for, for the use not in recreational purposes and, 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 and let, me, let me be clear I understand that some people find recreational pleasure in utilizing in, and, and working with these firearms but the reality is that was their design was not in, in its origin for recreation it was for soldiers to kill soldiers. And unfortunately and tragically, it's been used by people who were intent on mass murder in Canada and around the world. Bill Blair is again appealing to emotion. Now, again, this is a public minister of Canada, like he's part of the cabinet of Prime Minister Trudeau. Why is he appealing to emotion if he's actually for protecting Canadians? If he actually had data to actually support protecting Canadians. He should be all over that. He should be like, here, here it is. See, this gun, if we take it out of the system, in terms of the legal system that we can actually control, then there will be X less deaths or X less, you know, people hurt, hurt or whatever. For example, in the case of the AR-15 in Canada, there's been no one hurt in the last 30 years. So, 
like if that's the available public data where is the data that would support actually banning banning that if the mass shooter actually used an ar-15 why is it that in information still not released like that seems like you would want to actually get that information out there like this whole thing is very weird how it's being worded simply because they're saying please trust us but they don't tell us why all they said all they say is if you don't trust us bad things happen why not focus more specifically on the illegal importation of handguns guns and gangs i know that your government committed 320 odd million dollars but that was over five years and only about 86 million dollars over five years was to stop handguns at the border you and i both know that's a drop in the bucket 17 million dollars a year really 86 million over five years why evan, not spend more money stopping illegal evan, guns that are smuggled over the border evan and perhaps you missed the rest of our, uh, our our announcement on on friday or the platform commitment that we've made but we have said that there are a number of very important and, and invaluable things that we intend to do. So Bill Blair is really at the top of his game right here. Evan, the host of Question Period, came out with a really tough question about, you know, the liberal funding for, you know, the anti-smuggling or, or gang task force is really a drop in the bucket. And Bill Blair responded with, well, they have platform commitments. They intend to really do some valuable things basically it means nothing like everything that Bill Blair said meant nothing and I would love to see politicians challenge so much more on this because like I don't feel safer with this guy being in the public safety office if they're asking hey why don't you go after gangs why don't why don't you go after the smuggling and he answers well we got platform commitments I feel safer already on Friday, we did fulfill our promise to, to make prohibited military-style assault weapons in this country because there's no place for those weapons. But we have also indicated that we, at the very first opportunity, will bring forward legislation that will enable us to take far more effective action with new authorities for the police, but also new pe offenses and new penalties for those who smuggle firearms across our border into this country, for those who steal them, to make sure that, they, that we have stronger storage regulations and laws so that the weapons are far more difficult to steal, and for those who traffic in weapons, to buy them legally and then sell them illegally. We are bringing forward measures to deal with that. It requires legislation, and as soon as Parliament resumes, we'll take those. So Bill Blair is a little bit disingenuous with his comments. He goes from, we're going to get tough on crime, to... Responsible gun owners need to ensure that their firearms are stored properly to smuggling is a big issue. And all three statements are given the same weight when that's not the case in real life. Like the smuggling is like 80, 80% 80 of the issue, right? And the actual crime is like 99% of the issue. So if you're not paying attention, you might think that the responsible gun owners are a giant part of this problem. And that's just not the case. The case is the smuggling is a problem and the crime is a problem. What is actually being done about that? Steps. Minister, what about grandfathering for two years? There's this, there's this two year amnesty. What are you telling people who have these guns? They clearly will not, uh, they don't like what you're doing. They, they own these guns. Why give them a two year amnesty? You saw in New Zealand after they had a mass shooting, they banned a lot of guns, they had a buyback. The buyback, I think the take-up is less than 10%. So explain what the grandfather clause means and why the two-year amnesty. Yeah, the amnesty was put in place because we recognize the Canadians purchased these guns legally. And we've made a change in regulation that now makes those weapons prohibited. But we were not going to put those Canadians who purchased those guns legally in a position of criminal liability. And so we have put an amnesty in place for two years. That amnesty period, it's, it's a non-permissive amnesty that, that says they can't shoot them. They can't go hunting or, or target shooting with it. Um, they, they won't be able to use it. They won't be able to sell it. But we did not want, because they, they were in legal lawful possession of them, to, to put them into criminal jeopardy. And so there is an amnesty period. And in that amnesty period, we have committed to bring forward legislation. Legislation that Parliament will make a determination on how we can safely, effectively, and responsibly address those weapons in our society. And we have said we will introduce a buyback program. But that requires legislation and it requires a budget. And Parliament will make that decision when Parliament resumes. Uh 
All right, last question to you, Minister Blair. How do we know if this is successful? If I speak, speak to you in a year or two years and the number of uh, homicides that are gun related has not gone down, do I say, great, you found a solution to the wrong problem. The, re the real problem is handguns smuggled in from the US. You've solved the problem that doesn't exist. How, what is the metric of success here, sir? Gavin, I've spent my entire life trying to reduce gun violence, and I think there are a number of very important ways to do that. Re restricting the access, the supply of guns, is an important metric for us, and we are taking steps to do that. We also have a lot of work to do to reduce the demand for those guns, and we are prepared to take that action as well. Ultimately, our success will be measured on what does not happen. And so if, if we do not have any more of these instances where someone gains access to a weapon that was designed to kill people and then chooses to go out and do so, and we're going to make it far more difficult for a person to gain these weapons. Bill Blair seemed very excited that responsible gun owners can no longer shoot their AR-15s or any of the other 10,000 firearms that are being prohibited on a almost hourly basis. But that makes you wonder because those same responsible gun owners are able to keep those weapons for two full years. So the government must think that they're responsible enough to own them. So it doesn't, it, why would they let them keep them? if they didn't think they were responsible enough to own them. And as Evan brought up earlier in the interview, these firearms represent less than 1% 1, 1 of all the firearms deaths in Canada. It's almost a non-issue, non and it's going to cost billions of dollars. The initial $600 million estimate was only based on the AR-15 alone. That was one firearm. There's now 9,500, and in true government fashion, this has ballooned to an unbelievable scope. It's going to cost billions and billions and billions of dollars. And nobody will be safer for it because the criminals will not turn their guns in. And the laws that allowed the Nova Scotia shooter to keep his guns will allow other shooters who get their guns illegally to keep theirs. And the people who are responsible at the end of the two years will turn those guns in, having never been a threat in the first place. So with that, I will leave you at the end of this very long video. I apologize for that. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe and I will be back in the next one.